Honorable guests, distinguished members of diplomatic corps, senior government officials, distinguished academicians, and colleagues, and most importantly, climate change and gender enthusiasts. Um, it is indeed a great pleasure, and I would like to thank uh, Chima Saab for uh, giving me this wonderful opportunity for sharing a podium with uh, such a distinguished uh, scholars, experts, policy practitioners, and uh, a number of other colleagues in the room. Um, at the same time, I would like to welcome Dr. Dindo. I had the pleasure of uh, sharing some thoughts with uh, him in a slightly informal setting last night. And I found him, uh, uh, pleasantly found him, uh, uh, very knowledgeable about Pakistan and uh, uh, since he had, a, he had a stint in Pakistan uh, in his previous life. But I think the most important thing which I found is that he's uh, so expressively passionate about the challenges which Pakistan is facing at the same time, the potential Pakistan is having both on the climate change and nature conservation as well as on, on, on gender aspects. So um, this is a, this was a nice, pleasant evening. Thank you very much for uh, um, having me and then uh, sharing your thoughts with me. Now, um, coming to this important event and the launch of this, uh, this CC gap, I would say that this is uh, uh, extremely important as well as uh, the most fitting, timely, and uh, to some extent a desperately needed uh, effort and initiative. Now, why timely, why fitting, why desperately needed? Then there are a number of reasons, but uh, let, me, let me just share a couple of questions, or maybe just throw a couple of questions, and I'm sure that the speakers coming afterward might want to take that on. Uh, well, first of all, um, if we look into this, since we're talking about climate change, and uh, if we look into, the, into the, uh, the climate policy perspective, international climate policy perspective and development in the UNFCCC process, what we know that the recognition for uh, the climate action and the impacts were very well recognized at the very, very early phases of the UNFCCC processes. If we look into the 1992 convention, there are, uh, there are very strong references to, to the gender aspects of it, gender inequalities, pre-existing gender inequalities. At the same time, there was this concern, even at that point in time, that with the climate action, with the policy coming into the full motion, the wheels going into the implementation in several parts of the world, including countries like Pakistan, it's, it is going to have ad adverse impacts and the, it is going to increase the gender inequal inequalities. Um, but nevertheless, I think uh, we, uh, all the policy development developers and the practitioners, we took our good sweet time and we are here today in Pakistan when we're seeing this, this kind of a, a very uh, instrumental piece coming to, together uh, now. But anyway, it says never uh, too late. But uh, when we look into it in a, in a very honest manner, I mean, there are studies after studies, and there's a very credible data, which uh, very clearly show that gender disparities in climate change vulnerabilities not only reflect pre-existing inequalities in societies, but they further reinforce them. At the same time, we know that from our experiences, observations, and the, the number of people who have been a lot more instrumental in this area rather than me, but we, we see that inequalities in the ownership and the control of household assets, rising familial burdens due to male out migrations, declining food and water access, increased what disaster exposures seriously undermine women inequalities and it increased the disparities. It translated into, into many adverse impacts such as economic independence, enhanced human capital, and inability to maintain the health and the well-being of the food insecurity. My previous speakers very eloquently articulated the, some of these areas, so I'm not going to go into too much, uh, too much details into that. So, but at the same time, there is a silver lining, and uh, what we are seeing, especially the, the kind of a pressure which is coming from both ends, the one is very much the bottom up, which is when um, uh, we go and we implement the projects and interventions, either they are in the climate change, the classical climate change intervention, mitigation, adaptation, or they enter into the DRR and DRF and other areas. What we are seeing is that the women and the gender aspects and the inequalities, they are becoming visible and there's a pressure from the ground that these need to be care 